When we hear about how advisors are using AI, we hear about note-taking or meeting note summaries, writing content for marketing, or maybe helping with emails, things like that. But what Dennis has built is something that I believe is changing the game for advisors. It's different than anything that I've seen yet. I actually got to test it out last week and I was pretty amazed at, at what it's capable of. And you can see a written description of Munin, the tool below in the company. And uh, if you're interested in testing it out, you can reach out to Dennis directly, but also look for the timestamps in this video because Dennis is sharing more about how advisors should be thinking about AI moving forward, how they can use it to optimize what they're doing to help more people and to grow their firm. So check out the description below, reach out to Dennis if you want, and then enjoy the episode. Dennis, we've known each other for a little bit of time and uh, you're doing some pretty uh, amazing things when it comes to the world of financial advice and incorporating AI into making advisors better and making advisors the way that you describe, or I think you've, you've said this, but making them more superhuman, something like that. But exactly. you're not an advisor. I know you know a lot of advisors. Why, why did you get into the world of AI and specifically AI in the advising landscape? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me on, Dave. And yeah, so my journey began uh, whilst I was at university. Um, I, I'm a serial entrepreneur. And my first project came about as a university project. Um, back in 2015, AI was this whole new realm and whole new different way of building things. So I've used AI to build companies in different sectors. Um, I've previously applied AI for construction. Um, uh, I've used AI in global seafood logistics, um, a bit of a niche and unusual application, but a lot of the mm -hmm. seafood transactions globally now are powered in some way by something that we've built. And we've also used AI in our virtual events. So large scale corporate events. And my journey into the, uh, like you pointed out, my journey into the financial advisory world actually began after I had some success with my past companies. I came from the client side. So I was seeking to work with a financial advisor. We, I met an advisor, uh, we fell in love, <laughs> I started working together. We really got on and, you know. Everything was going great until some of the problems started coming up. Some missed emails or unresponded emails, missed calls, missed messages. And there were a few things that was happening in my personal life where I really needed to talk to someone and talk to that advisor in that moment. And instead of being kind of upset about this situation, um, we sat down with the advisor and he kind of told me what his day to day looks like. And it came about as a moment of realization that this advisor was spending nearly three quarters of his time, in fact, more than three quarters of his time on back office work that was taking mm. away from his ability to be there for me. So we decided to build something and build tools on using the latest technology. AI is just one tool in our repertoire to help the advisor spend more time with clients by doing heavy lifting in the back office and also enhance the level and depth of client relationships. Um, so the AI that we're building kind of enhances, gives advisors more time and enhances their ability to go deeper um, with more clients. I love that. And yeah, that's a common, as you know, and as I know you've talked to a lot of advisors, the common problem is that uh, the balance of, you gotta be, well, one, you have to be the marketing person and the sales person, right? You have to be the advisor, which is what clients are looking to us to do to be the advisor is the main, really the only thing they want us to do. Yeah. And then you have to be the operations person uh, doing the paperwork or doing the scheduling or whatever, all the, the ops stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that, and, and the problem with it, and this could be many industries as well, but you have this level of success and you're growing, but that problem doesn't go away until you can either start hiring, which a lot of people do, but then there's also a lot of advisors that know the difficulty of that. That's a whole different thing. Then you become an, a manager and you have a whole different uh, leadership um, skill that you have to develop. And it's difficult. If you get into, into this world to help people and help them make good money decisions and be that trusted person, but then it just, all this other stuff starts to bombard us and you went through it as a client. So I love, I love the things that you're doing. Um, I'm just curious what, as we're, you're the expert in AI, What's the role that currently AI is playing for advisors? How do you see advisors 
using it? What's the landscape? And then where do you see this progressing? You know, yeah. or, or you've got a futuristic mind. Give us some, some of that future. Yeah, of course. So I think like with any new paradigm shifting tool, there's layers to unpack and layers of use of AI that, um, that builds out like different experiences. And I think right now we're kind of on level one, which is every advisor is familiar with chat GPT. I think everybody's logged in, tried to get it to generate an email or, um, filter through some information, do some basic analysis and beyond that. Once, once you kind of see the limitations of it, it looks like magic the first time, but then you see the limitations and you kind of abandon it because this experience is not tailored specifically to an industry. It's a very general tool like chat GPT and what open AI and other models have built. So the, the level two experience is really tailoring and creating tools specific for the different niches or industries that people operate in, in this case, for financial advisory. And we're seeing a plethora of different um, tools come out from note-taking to document extraction to generating certain marketing collateral um, basic email generation. These are kind of the level two tools and they augment, start to augment the advice and allow them to operate in an accelerated fashion. But there is a challenge to this. It, it's, it's these tools are new, they're unfamiliar and you're trying to integrate them into an existing workflow. And like you mentioned before, advisors, to me, advisors are a lot like startup entrepreneurs. You know, they've gone out, they've built their own venture uh, from the ground up. And it might be three to five years before, you know, you're making your first hire and it, and you have to change your processes. So it's the same thing here for advisors. You're having to really change the way you fundamentally work. And I think this is kind of where we're at now, where there's some new tools that augment advisors, but they're not really integrated into workflows. And this is where we're looking or trying to look a few steps ahead. And we're thinking about AI on a workflow level. So instead of augmenting an advisor in a point way, like point by point, we're trying to build out technology and tools that augment entire workflows and give advisors peace of mind that things can be accomplished, that they were doing more in a much more automated, connected manner. And then the future that we're looking to is a whole new different paradigm and experiences of how advice is delivered. And the vision that I would present and I see in my head, like imagine a world where as an advisor, all you had to do was focus on your clients. You turn up to the meetings, you have assistive tools that help you dig really deep and guide you through these client relationships. They do automated data collection. They delegate and complete tasks by themselves. And you as the advisor take your meetings, you provide input into these tools, you uh, generate quality advice that you can review, and then you're briefed and you show up and deliver it to the client. So it's very like the future that I see of financial advisors from speaking to many of them in industry is an advisor that is a hundred percent client centric. Yeah. So that almost seems too good to be true. Where are specifically for, for your solution? Uh, tell us a bit about that. Where are we right now? What's, what are advisors doing? What's possible right now? And yep. I know th th what's the next, the next thing that we could look forward to not five years from now, but right now. Yeah. So right now we're in the, uh, level two, which is some point solutions, which are helping advisors in specific, um, tasks and accomplishing specific tasks. And there's a couple of reasons why we're here. Number one is whilst AI is moving very quickly. We as humans take time to adopt new technology. So it's just a matter of time before we start integrating and learning how to like use this in our day-to-day -day workflows. But number two is there is this huge legacy of 30, 40 years of technology, and it doesn't always play nice with these tools. And, um, it is a challenge sitting on this side of the table, looking at this as a technologist. There is a challenge in making things work nicely in a very, should we say, a legacy existing environment. That's really, really hard. Um, so I think that what we are trying to do or the approach that we're taking is how do we integrate and play nice with the legacy environment in a way that's smart, but at the same time, focus on like larger scale workflow automations, um, and trying to look forward and imagine new experiences. So to give you an example, the tool, um, like our flagship tool that we're building is called Minim. 
it's an AI meeting co-pilot for financial advisors, and we're giving them a heads up display that, um, takes notes for them, gives client insights in real time during meetings, and more importantly, identifies our advice opportunities for the advisor. You know, our bandwidth as humans is limited and we can't focus on the client relationship whilst taking notes, whilst remembering with perfect recall, every possibility that we could bring forward. And this is where I see like an opportunity to augment advisors, um, or give them superpowers, superhuman powers that it just wasn't possible before. And what that means, you know, you could say that this is a, a meeting tool, but what that means is perfect recall. It means uh, perfect capturing of client information. We found that advisors, um, just because it's not humanly possible to capture anything, capture somewhere between three to 5% of what is possible during a call, mostly focusing on the relationship, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, the vision for this is being able to cascade that into um, workflows of automation that go into the back office. And it's giving relief to advisors from having to go through the meeting notes and capture these data points, from having to enter data into systems manually, from having to generate and remember every single follow-up email and have perfect recall across every single client touch point that they might have decades of. So it's, it's, that's kind of the level that we're trying to work at and trying to think ahead instead of both solutions. You know what it felt like? So I was, um, I. I got to test drive this a few weeks ago and thank you, by the way, it felt like, you know, how the, the president, let's say any president, but president of the U S when he's showing up to a party, he has someone next to him. I forget what the name is, but they, they're going towards someone. He whispers in his ear, that's so-and-so he's got three kids, blah, blah, blah. And he gives them all the information. So the president looks like the most charismatic person in the world because he remembers that information and he could focus on the person intently and he doesn't have to be looking at note cards or taking notes or any of it because he has that that person in his ear um it felt like that kind of where when we were yeah. talking it's like don't forget to you know we we were talking yeah. about scenarios they've got a, a kid who is turning 18 bring up the titling issue with the custodial uh ira blah 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 all that so that was you're going to have advisors probably knocking down your door wanting to test drive this or see, learn more about it. I know that you can't help everybody. What's, what's the, the ideal firm that you're looking for to, to test drive this and run it and see if it works for, for the firm. Yeah. So, um, firstly, like, we're open to every type of advisor out there. Like, um, I, I really, you know, I really value and see that a lot of people are going independent and starting their own practices and, um, like. I feel almost compelled because that's where my journey began working with an independent solo advisor, um, like to kind of give back and be a part of this community. We've also had firms, you know, so ranging from 20, 50, and most recently 150 advisors who have started to explore our solution. And they're obviously looking at it from a couple of different perspectives. They're looking at it from, you know, enabling advisors to enhance their client relationships. They're looking at it from the perspective of how do we allow all advisors to perform on that topmost level by collecting this data, understanding, doing analytics and feeding that back in for performance. We see some of the bigger firms like the hundred to 150, uh, person firms, advisor firms who are looking to extract data and use it for teaching and upskilling and accelerating the speed at which advisors can, um, perform at that topmost level with clients. And then most recently, we're also seeing compliance or officers and firms. That's my favorite yeah. subject. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, get, well, tell me, tell me about that. What, what, what did well, the compliant tell me about that? Well, uh, uh, just on that point, like for compliance officers, I, I get this feeling uh, having spoken with a few recently that there isn't a lot of tooling that is built specifically for them. And it, it feels, it feels a shame to me that they're overlooked. Um, because they, they have a job, which sometimes can be a little bit thankless. Like I got the sensation that they're always lost in the know of things happening. And the compliance officers I was speaking with, they brought up the fact that actually it allows them to be front of line, um, without being physically front of line. It allows them to no longer be the police officer who is, you know, going around and retrospectively, like, um, you know, kind of say what's happened. It allows them to actually be proactive rather than reactive in the sense that like our heads up display 
within our platform that assists advisors, we can bring up, um, we can bring up prompts that rectify compliance issues in the moment because you use more compliant language. And so from a compliance officer perspective, they've looked at this tool and they, they've, they've basically been like, this, this is amazing. Like this helps me massively. So there's, I think we can help different sizes of firms and, um, from solo advisors, like helping them with heavy lifting to larger firms, helping them, you know, with issues from learning, upskilling, standardization and compliance. That's yeah, that's, it seems, yeah, again, it seems like it's, uh, too good to be true, but I know that it's not because I've, I've tested it and I, I hear all the things you're doing. It's amazing. What about the, the common, there's actually a couple worries or fears that come up and it's again, not just the financial industry, but what about the, the fear? It sounds wild, right? You've got the heads up display kind of giving you the prompts and things to think about that you wouldn't be able to do if it was just you, maybe you would, but it's just the assist. Um, what about just the looking out into the future, the worry of AI taking the advisor job? I mean, we've seen some of the, the, the studies of AI able to do empathy better than human doctors in diagnosing problems. That's kind of scary. Uh, that reminds me of an advisor world, the advisor world too. Do, should we be worrying about that? What's your opinion on that? Yeah. So my, my stance is you know, coming from outside the industry, approaching this as someone who is deeply focused on AI and technology, I, I strongly believe that advisors have nothing to be afraid of because I do not think that AI will replace the human relationship, that human connection, um, that we have, uh, and at the end of the day, like the advice, like picking a financial advisor is so personal. And working with a financial advisor is very personal. It's very deep. Um, it's, it's about the relationship and trust. And I, I've actually explained to other people, like, when else do you talk about this level of finance with anybody? Like sometimes spouses don't, or, or partners don't have these discussions amongst each other. Um, you know, you're not encouraged to discuss your finances in the workplace, like very openly. It's a bit of a taboo subject. So in some ways, you know, you have someone that can help you navigate um, your finances, but also serve as a mentor, or I believe someone called them almost a therapist to an extent, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to money and understanding your relationship to money, it's really hard to see that disappearing. It's really hard to see AI replacing that. Um, what I would say is you have to look to the end customer, like the actual client and what they prefer, because you can look to solutions that exist already in the market, digital only solutions. They do cater to a certain demographic of people. But if you look as an aggregate, as a whole, people are still seeking a personal connection. And the other thing that I, I will say is, is even in the tech sphere, you can see that as we're approaching a more and more digital world where we have less and less human interaction, we, we seem to be craving more and more of the analog as well as yeah. a counterbalance um, to that. And uh, for some people. You know, and advises one of those points where it's still like a human connection and a human relationship to know that everything's going to be okay and we'll figure the th things out. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. That's a good, good futuristic viewpoint. Um, can you touch on the security concerns of, I don't know whether to ask generally or specific to, to what, what you're doing at Munin? Um, yeah, of course. Cause that's always a, Again, thinking about compliance, thinking about security how, and data, how, how should we be thinking about that? Yeah, of course. Um, so I, I think there's, there's a couple of ways of looking at this. So when chat GPT came out and I've, I've seen many podcasts on this discussion, um, even like last week, I was listening to a discussion about how we use AI and there's this fear that it's learning from every single data point, every single client point that is uploaded and shared. The reality is, is over six months ago, or possibly even more, like these firms obviously need to operate in like the, any firm that process AI needs to operate in a way that is compliant and that preserves client data, client privacy, confidentiality. So we've had enterprise and business grade AI that does not store and does not learn from this data. Um, you know, to some extent we have to trust, you know, open AI and other players in the market that they don't do any kind of processing, but they're obviously under the microscope for these kind of things. But from a, uh, 
pure data storage and collection perspective, these models, they don't store this kind of stuff. But um, from our view, we've taken it a step further to um, ensure confidentiality for all of um, any data that passes through me. And so number one is just a little bit of background. I am an advisor and uh, a member of the advisory committee for a company called Oblivious. Um, Oblivious is a market leader in zero knowledge proof technology. And what that means is their ability to do analysis on data without ever revealing the fundamental data. Um, if that seems almost impossible, it is in the realm of things similar to quantum computers. It's just years ahead of what the public kind of knows and is aware of. Um, it just so happens that the CEO of this company, Jack, was my first ever employee. So um, we have a very mm. good relationship and we applied these kind of technologies to what we use. Um, and the second part is we have additional layers and safeguards where any personal data is never fed directly into end models. So we have almost an AI before the AI, which passes, removes sensitive information, um, and only passes general high level context into the models instead of like client specific information. And the last point is, uh, that, that I want to mention is for myself. Uh, my master's degree when I was studying at the London School of Economics was uh, in management of information systems, and my major was in data privacy, security, and data governance. Um, it's what I wrote my thesis on. It's what we based my first company that I built on, on the ability to preserve people's anonymity and data. So we built this from the ground up to adhere to these kind of standards. At the end of the day, our view on all of this is that you're the advisor, it's your clients, it should be your data. And I've noticed that, that not to fire any shots into the industry, but I've noticed that some other players don't treat it this way and they feel like I've helped you collect this data. Therefore I own this data. Like mm -hmm. that's, that's not the way that we work. Yeah. Okay. That's comforting for sure. Yeah. Um, what about, uh, I guess just last question. We're looking at AI do all of these things to assist advisors and help and make us better so we could be focused more on the person sitting across the table or across the screen. Um, what should we not be looking to AI to do um, for us? Or what are the, uh, maybe the concepts? Yeah, I, I don't know if that's coming across. What are the things we should not be trying to do with AI? Um, I like I said, there's different levels and different types of tools, but I always think yeah. that there is a personal touch required. So l l let me give you an example. Um, we should not be allowing AI to, without overview, offer uh, trading advice. So doing like what is humanly impossible, analyzing billions of data points and then cheating them back and making decisions that haven't been reviewed. And on that point, this is where some of the regulators like have made it clear that where you fall foul with AI is where you do something that is completely humanly impossible or improbable. You know, you, you analyze every single stock movement within a second and then deliver advice based on that. Right. Um, not saying that advisors do that on a day to day basis, but it's just an exaggerated example for like more illustration in the advisor workflows that I see, we shouldn't expect AI to produce complete financial plans. Uh, by themselves without human overview. Like our perspective is like we can get plans 50, 60, 70, 80% complete, but a human has to be in the loop in order to review it. And most importantly, a human has to be in the loop to deliver it. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything, sometimes my mind gets blown and then I, I get stuck. What, what question, anything, any other advice to advisors, uh, in this, this big topic yeah. of AI? And then I want to hear how to get in touch with you or get in touch with someone if they're interested in, in test driving this and, or seeing if it's a, it's a solution for them. Yeah, of course. Um, in, in terms of what I would say to advisors, I, I think that using AI is the next quantum leap in terms of a fundamental shift in how a practice is run. Uh, obviously people are in competition with each other and you always need an edge. And it will be the early adopters of this technology that will grab more clients, will have deeper, more meaningful relationships with clients, and that will 
you, you, it will become obvious the difference between someone who is using this kind of technology in terms of their client relationship, um, management ability, and also how many clients they can support. Um, I think what I would encourage advisors to do is to try and figure out how to implement these technologies earlier on, because when you look, when we look at the advisory landscape, um, this is why I'm firmly committed to helping advisors who are not working at white houses and banks. They have a lot of this tooling. They have a lot of this processes that we're not always subject and privy to that gives them a huge competitive advantage. And, um, there's, there's something really nice in the kind of David and Goliath story, so to speak of, you know, supporting David, um, the independent advisors, the people who are cutting their own path, um, through, through this world versus like building a tool that's just solely set on, you know, the extremely large enterprises. Yeah. Okay. That is cool. Have you thought about naming the company David? <laughs> um, well, Dave, maybe. Yeah. So, um, what's the, if someone, if an advisor is listening to this or a leader of a bigger, who, how can we reach out to you? What's the next step if we want to, to start testing this or can we? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's open to testing. It's open for use. Uh, we're taking and working and partnering with advisors and firms of different sizes. Um, I'm passing in all of these conversations because I want to help people navigate their journey into this world. So, um, if anybody wants to reach out, they can reach out to law directly. I ha I'm on every single call, have every single conversation to understand how to implement, but also the worries and concerns that you may have, I'm here to answer them. So if you want to get in contact, um, you can drop me an email, um, Dennis at muninai.com. And I'm sure Dave, you'll include that as well. Um, after the call. Yeah. yeah. I'll put the information and, uh, the website and everything down below. So look for that. Dennis, thanks for going over this. Thanks for getting the, what could be, uh, well, probably not an introduction to AI, but at least for specific use cases for advisors, it's pretty exciting. Um, thanks for doing it. Thanks for building this company. Well, thank you, Dave. And yeah, thank you so much to all the advisors listening. Uh, thank you for welcoming, welcoming me as a non-advisor into the space and, uh, yeah, telling me the ins and outs of your journeys. I, I love listening. <laughs>